Section 1.3, Complex Numbers, Part 1. The complex number system is made up of real numbers and non-real numbers. We also call non-real numbers imaginary numbers. I is the imaginary unit. It's usually indicated with a lowercase italics I. You'll see that in your textbook. The value of I is the square root of negative 1. So I is equal to the square root of negative 1. I squared is equal to I squared, which is the square root of 1 squared, which of course is negative 1. So I squared is equal to negative 1. Let's investigate some other powers of I. So i to the eighth power, well, since we know that i squared is equal to negative 1, it would be helpful to write it like this, where we know we have i squared in parentheses, that can be substituted by negative 1. So what, do we, what power do we raise i squared to, to get i to the eighth? Well, i to the fourth, right? So now we can say negative 1 to the fourth, because we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. And of course, when you raise a negative to an even power, you get an even, an, uh, even number 1. You get a positive number, sorry. When you raise a negative to an even power, you get a positive. Okay, let's see what happens when we raise i to the ninth power. Well, we'd like to be able to write this as i squared to some power, but 9 is an odd number. So let's write it with an even, the highest even power in i to the ninth is i to the eighth, but then we'd still have i to the first, right? So altogether that's i to the ninth. Well, as we saw, let's do it again. i to the eighth can be written as i squared to the fourth, but we still have this last value of i. So we already showed that i squared to the fourth, negative one to the fourth, and negative one to the fourth was one, and therefore, the answer this time is just i. i to the ninth is equal to i. Let's look at i to the tenth. Will we get the same thing as we saw with i to the eighth? Maybe? Let's see. We know we can write this as i squared. There's our negative one. To the fifth, i squared being negative one. But this time, we have a negative to an odd power. So negative one to the fifth is negative 1. So now we've shown so far three different possible answers when raising i to powers. Positive 1, i, negative 1. Let's see what happens when we raise i to the 11th power. Again, we'll have to break it up to an even power, the highest even power we can, and then just have i remaining. So that's our i to the 11th. i to the 10th, as we saw before, we can write as i squared to the fifth times i, there's our i to the eleventh, and of course i squared is negative one, and negative one to the fifth we saw was negative one, but we still have this i, so this time we get negative i. There's a fourth possible answer, positive one, i, negative one, negative i. How about i to the twelfth? Well, that's an even, so we can write that as i squared to the sixth, and replace i squared with negative one to the sixth, and a negative to an even power is a positive one. And actually what's happened is we've started the cycle over. So, the eight through eleven, that gave us the four possible answers, starting with i to the twelfth. If we did i to the thirteenth, we'd get the same thing as i to the ninth i to the 14th would give us the same thing as i to the 10th, and so on. Four possible outcomes when raising i to powers. i and negative i are reciprocals. Let's see if we can show why. So if we see i and we think of what, what would you naturally think the reciprocal of i would be? Well, reciprocal we think of just saying, oh, well, 1 over i. Okay. So let's investigate if 1 over i is equal to negative i. 
So I would take that 1 over i and multiply by a, a carefully chosen 1 of i over i. Why am I doing that? So my denominator now is i squared. And what do we say i squared is equal to? Negative 1. And of course, any number divided by negative 1 just makes that a negative number. That's a funny looking i, isn't it? Let me try to do that a little better. There we go. So this explains why i and negative i are reciprocals. So let's see what happens when we raise i to negative powers i to the negative 8. Okay, well let's write that as its reciprocal. 1 over i to the positive 8 using rules for exponents, which is 1 over, how do we handle i to the 8? We said i squared to the 4th. 1 over, we replace i squared with negative 1 to the 4th. Negative 1 to the 4th was 1. So i to the negative 8 is positive 1. As you might expect, we'll get something different here with i to the negative 9th. 1 over i to the positive 9th, which is 1 over, we said that would be i to the 8th times i. And we just showed that i to the 8th was what? i to the 8th here was 1. So we don't have to do that again. We can just show 1 over 1 times i, which is 1 over i, which we've already shown is negative i. Remember that? This is the reciprocal. These are reciprocals. So we said this is one way to write the reciprocal of i, but this is also a way to write the reciprocal of i. We just showed that. Okay, how about another negative power? i to the negative 10. 1 over i to the 10, which we've already shown we can write as i squared to the 5th, or 1 over negative 1 to the 5th, which is 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. A different answer again. And finally, Let's look at i to the negative 11th. 1 over i to the positive 11. 1 over i to the 10th times i. i to the 10th, recall, we said i squared to the 5th times i. That i squared to the 5th, we just had that right there. We know that comes out to be negative 1. So we get 1 over negative i, which is the same as negative 1 over i, right? Just take that negative out. And we said that 1 over i is the same thing as negative i, that reciprocal. Two different ways to write the reciprocal of i. So that's positive i, another possible solution. I don't like how I wrote that. Positive i. There we go.